glory to glory, glory, glory. Hallelujah. Glory, glory, glory. Numbers chapter 13. Give you some context about this verse that we're going to look at today. The book of Numbers is a book that describes how God wanted to uh, bless the Israelites. It's really about a book how and how God wanted to implement his precepts for the people of God as recorded in the book of, of Leviticus. And what God was doing at the moments in the verses leading up to uh, Numbers 13, God was teaching them how to live as a nation as they progressed and as they made progress as a nation. And as they made progress, God made a promise to his people. But they had to go through what I describe as a vetting process of preparation. And before the nation could enter into the land, into the promised land, God instructed Moses, I'm just giving you some background. He instructed, instructed Moses to send some men into the land, to, to spy out the land, if you will. Yeah. It's interesting, he sent them to a land that was already promised to them. But the goal was for them to possess it but they had to deal with the problem. They had to deal with the Canaanites. So that brings us up to Numbers 13, verse 30. We'll read from the CEV today. And it says, Caleb calmed down the crowd and said, let's go and take the land. I know we can do it. I'm gonna stop right there. I know we can do it. That's what I'm preaching about today. I know we can do it. I don't care how big it is. I, I, I don't care what, what they say is, what the problem or the issue is. I know we can do it. Why? Because God promised me. If I live right, going out, going uh, abundant life singers, he promised me. I meant to say that for the end, but <laughs> Woo, if I live right, mm. I might come back to it in a minute. <laughs> Y'all don't hold it against me. <laughs> but as we look at these verses of this affirmation of faith, the first observation from the text is that God will give you evidence before the promise. That's true. God will give you some evidence before the promise. When you look at how God directed Moses to send the spies, all God was doing was confirming his word that was already released. He told them, send some spies from each tribe right. to the land that I'm already giving you. Yeah. I believe I'm in the book. In the book it was not God's purpose or God's plan for them to forfeit, and I'm talking about the first generation, because there were two generations. It was not God's plan for this first generation to forfeit the promise. But when you look at the text, it tells me for our lives here today that every decision in life will have implications. So it's important to trust the voice of God. I'm not talking about Brother Bobo, Sister Junebug. I'm talking about 
the voice of God. You got to trust the voice of God for every circumstance, everything that you face in your life, every promise, even when it doesn't look like it's going to happen at the right time or at the time that you think. You have to trust the voice of God. And that's where they failed when they came back. We look at the text. And Caleb was one of the ones and said, I know we can do it. Hallelujah. I want to share with you that the next thing and the next place that God is taking many of us, it is attached to your obedience. It's attached to your yes to God. It is attached to your response. And for many, it's going to be how quickly you respond to God. Because as we all know, sometimes we're a little bit slow. Yeah. How many witnesses do I have? Some of us are a little bit slow. And we, because we say, we, and we go back and forth. But God, you didn't really say that. God, I know, you, I know you're not going to bring me into this. I, I, yeah, he did. That's why you got to trust the voice of God and not the, the, the voice of the enemy. Because the enemy will lie to you every time. And I'm talking about sometimes the enemy is the end of me. End of you. Stop doubting yourself. Stop doubting God. Trust God. Hallelujah. I didn't mean to get too loud. Yeah, did. Oh, glory to God. God made a promise that the land was theirs. They just had to go see it. <laughs> they just had to go walk on it. They had to go experience it for themselves. Told them, come back. Bring back what you see. Come back with a report of, of what is in the land. Come back. She's all right. <laughs> she in the spirit. She getting what she needs. She good. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. She can see the light. <laughs> Hallelujah to God. Mm. Hallelujah. He said all they got to do is come back. Just come back. Show. Come back with the fruit. Come back with, with a report. And it's interesting. The season that they went into was a season of harvest. So they got a preview of how God was going to bless them. I really sense that God is beginning to give many of us a preview. We're not quite there yet. But God has been giving previews of what's next. God has been kind of giving some glimmers of hope. I can see the light. <laughs> God has been showing many of us. He's been speaking to some of us. And I tell you, last week was good for me because I tell you, God was speaking to me all week from Sunday to Saturday. He was speaking. He was speaking and just giving me some glimmers of hope. And I didn't know y'all was going to sing that song, but that was good. But he was just giving me some glimmers of hope, some glimmers of his glory, showing me some signs. Mind you on the right track. And for many, you think that God has forsaken you, but I got some news for you. You're on the right track. Despite the walls, despite what's going on in America, despite coronavirus, and I rebuke that demon of coronavirus. Hallelujah. Despite the, the stuff that, we, that we're facing and we're faced with, we're going to overcome it. Glory to God. Say, I'm, I'm going to overcome it. Hallelujah. God made a promise. It was occupied. But the territory was already theirs. All they had to do was follow the pattern to overtake their enemies. For some in this season, in this year of maximum results, you're going to see maximum results as you move, as you move in the direction that God is taking and calling you. And for some, this is a year of change. This is a year of uh, restoration. And for some, it is a year of restoration in relationships. 
for many, it's a, uh, it's a uh, restoration in your connection with God. Because as I could see around here, there's a lot of believers in here on the day. But there's some in here who believed once, but then stopped. I declare that this is a day of reconnection of your faith. Despite what you have gone through, despite some of the isms of relational stuff that we've gone through, I declare that this is a day of reconnection. Here and here. Did y'all hear what I'm saying? Here and here. You can't connect with God when you don't connect here. That's out of order. How can you say you love God, but then you don't love your brother or your sister? I think I'm in the Bible. Glory to God. I don't know how that got into... God will give you evidence before the promise, but that was a word for somebody. <laughs> Glory to God. I, what I was trying to say was, as God allows you to walk, as God is, allows you to um, move in strategic places and areas of your life, I think what God is saying for many, you need to continue in the direction that I'm calling you into. Continue in that direction. Continue in that vein. Keep going. Make sure you follow the formula. Make sure you follow the, stra the strategy that I'm giving to you for your life in this season. Because, you know, sometimes the strategy changes. The, the strategy, it changes because you face a different enemy. And the enemy, he camouflages himself. And you be looking like, well, it looked like that, but the enemy changes on us. That's why you got to pray in the spirit and say, God, give me wisdom. Hallelujah. Help me to deal with this the right way. Hallelujah. We need the power of the Holy Spirit. Glory to God. All right, let me move to the next observation. The next, second observation is that what you see is a matter of perspective. What you see right now it's a matter of your perspective. What do I mean by that? You can either see it your way <laughs> or you can see it God's way. Those are the two opinions that matter. Well, th th there's only one opinion that ma really matters the most and that's God's opinion. I want to say just because it looks hard, don't stop. Don't give up. If God has called you to it, if God has prepared you for it, he's going to bring it to full fruition. That means he's going to make good on the promise. Ooh, there is some promises that I'm standing on, even as I'm preaching to y'all. And I think I got a few witnesses that, that can identify with me that you got some promises before God that God has shared with you. Hallelujah. There's some promises that are yet to be fulfilled. Don't do like the first generation. Get the evidence. Look at it and say, look, it looked good, but I, I can't, we, we can't do this. They bigger than we are. They looking at us and we look like grasshoppers. It's a matter of perspective. God promised them he was going to bring them into the land. What did God promise you? What did God promise you on this year? I'm not just talking about a whole lot of stuff, but what did God really promise you? Hold on to that. Glory to God. You may be facing a big ob obstacle right now, but find a way to conquer it. You might be facing the biggest thing in your life. Some of us are facing some physical challenges. Some are facing some financial shifts. Some are facing uh, relationship changes and status changes and all that stuff. I want to say, find a way to conquer it. How are you going to find a way to conquer it? Trust God. Trust God. Don't be so quick to give up because it doesn't happen at your pace. Don't be so quick to stop. Don't be so quick to stop consecrating. 
Whoa, Lord. I say that because consecration breaks stuff up and open. It releases us into another realm of the spirit. And for some, we gave up so quickly, we said, we're going to start out. Yeah, I'm going to consecrate. Yeah. Tuesday came and somebody said, you're going to lunch? Yeah, I'm going. <laughs> Didn't even stop to think about it. Oh, I done bust somebody bubble. I'm not talking about no individual. <laughs> But I believe God has given us the power to conquer it. Whatever your it is, glory to God. Power of the Holy Ghost is moving. The power of the Holy Ghost, the power of the Holy Spirit is yet quick, active. He is active in us. We got to let him do the work in us. Glory to God. Ooh, this is good to me. The enemy will use psychological warfare to cause you to be intimidated. He begins in the mind. He wars against our thought life. He, he wars against sometimes the low self-esteem or areas that we are not as strong as maybe we could be because we've lost our, our identity in him. God says it's time to renew your identity with me. Hallelujah. Renew your mind. Renew your, your faith in God. Yeah. Yeah. It's interesting. Ten came back. Right. Okay. Saw the same thing right. that Joshua and Caleb saw. Right. Saw the same exact thing. It was a matter of perspective. But I believe there was something that was in Caleb. Because he was the one, the Bible really talks, who was verbal. Right. It describes him as saying, yeah, we brought it back. We are well able. That's what King James says, I think. <laughs> we can do this. We got a promise. Mm. We got a promise. We can do this. But the ten, they started spreading rumors. The Bible says, I believe that they started wailing and carrying on. Started giving up hope in the midst of the promise. How in the devil can you give up hope in the midst of the promise? You're on your way to victory. You're going, going, you're going to experience. You're going to sit down in it. You're going to look at it. Get it, look at it, and Examine it. God gonna allow you. Oh, that's a nice fan. He gonna he gonna show you. He gonna show you what he has promised you. But yet you just gonna let it go. Don't let it go. Hold on to the promise. That's all I'm trying to say. Hold on to the promise that God sh said to you. Hold on to the word. Don't let it go so easily. And get in the word. Spend time in the Word. I try to post at least one scripture a day on my social media, and y'all don't follow me. Shame on you. I, at, I am Myron Leach. I try to, if you don't have an a app on your Bible, on your phone or something, at, at least look at the Word every day, at least one time a day. Get some inspiration where the God will speak to you. So that he will give you some inspiration to keep going. We got enough still stuff to deal with every day. I believe God's word keeps our minds at peace. Mm. He keeps us steady when we when we hit an obstacle. When we get when we get in trouble, remember God's word. They forgot God's word and said, we can't do it. But Caleb said, we can do it. He was one of the ones, him and Joshua, they were not intimidated by the enemy's 
psychological warfare. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians, just in case I got some um, people say, show me some, give me some proof for that. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter number 10, verse number 4, just in case you're writing notes, and y'all better write notes because I told you I got something for y'all at the end of the year. For the weapons of our warfare, they're not fleshly or carnal, King James, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. When you hit a roadblock this week, when you hit some obstacles to your forward movement, get in the spirit. You can repeat the word to the enemy. I'm going to read it for you just one more time. For the weapons of our warfare, the weapons, the how we fight, it's not fleshly. It's not carnal. Hey. I'm going to say it one last time. Somebody get in the spirit. We need Holy Ghost. They're not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. I come against strongholds of the mind. I come against every wicked plan that has been released in the lives, over the lives of the Satan, you are, we rebuke you in the name of the Lord Jesus. You have no authority over my mind. You have no authority over my body. I celebrate your peace. Thank you for your shalom. That's peace. Ooh, but mighty to God, through God, to the pulling down of stronghold. The last observation that I need to share to you, with you on today is that when God makes a promise, he's committed to make it happen. I could dance right there. Mm. When God makes a promise, he's committed to make it happen. Joshua and Caleb, they knew somehow God was committed to make it happen. But somehow or other, the other 10 didn't think that God was committed. And they paid, unfortunately, the ultimate sacrifice. The Bible says that over two million people did not enter into the promised land. Go back and read your Bibles. I think I'm, I think I'm about right. About two million, it probably could have been plus or minus a little bit, but we're just gonna round off. About two million people forfeited their promise. You know what? I'm not going to be one of the ones who will forfeit God's promise over my life. God made me a promise that I would have good life, that I would have long life. And the same thing goes for you. Yes, you might be experiencing some challenges in your body. And Tamika, we're going to pray for you. And I speak life to your body even now. Yeah, you are facing a big wall right now. But I declare by the power of the Holy Ghost that you're going to come out on the winning side of this battle. Hallelujah. Yeah, there's, yeah the, 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 the enemy, I, I rebuke the enemy in your mind that is trying to tell you that it, this might be the end. We're going to take might out of the equation. You're going to win. You're going to survive. You're going to be a witness of God's glory and his healing in the earth. For people who thought that they were, they, there was no hope. You're going to be a witness. Hallelujah to God. She's going to be a witness for some of us. That God is able. And is willing. And is committed. 
to make the promise. Sure. All he needs is one witness. Sometimes he'll use two. I see one right there. Many of y'all don't know. I was one of the ones who was there. The doctors, I'm talking about you, came and gave a report. And some of y'all know, said that it don't look good right now. But over the course of several days, God said to this vessel, your time is not yet. There's more work for you to do. I'm committed to make you another vessel. I'm committed to show that my power still reigns. And I think I got some more witnesses. I see another witness back there on about the third or about the last row. The enemy came to her a couple of years ago and said that you got this and that. But she has fought through it. She has lived through it. Some of y'all don't know who I'm talking about. Y'all ask me, ask me later. But all it is is an indication that when God makes a promise to the righteous, you will live. He'll help you get through your obstacles. He'll help you get through your process. He'll speak life to your mind. He'll speak life into your spirit. And I speak life to your spirit. I speak life to your mind. Hallelujah. You shall win your battle. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, we can do it. Neighbor, you can do it. Neighbor, we can do it. Because God is strengthening us. I can do all things through Christ that gives me strength. He's committed to make it happen. was the one who didn't concentrate on the problem when you leave here don't concentrate on the problem because God is going to give you a solution don't become anxious don't become weary in your process why because in due season I'm going to just close the iPad on that one if you don't give up going through the tight places the narrow places you have to learn how to adapt sometimes you have to be like an ant or a worm when it's too tight they learn how to adapt like a spider a spider goes sideways I see some cats do that too You got to learn how to adapt to your situation. Caleb was willing to adapt. Yeah, it was big. Yeah, it was, it was troublesome to the rest. They spread it rumors. They spread it lies that they couldn't do it. But look at God. Way over in, jo in, jo in Joshua. And I close the iPad. Joshua chapter number 12. Ooh, this blessed me. I ain't write it down, but anyway. Over in Joshua 12, 13, 14, 15, something like that. I can't remember the exact chapter. Got, they came to the allotment of the land. Right. I was reading it. That's what happened. I, I forgot to jot down the chapter. But the kicker was, Caleb was 40 years old. At the time, 
that they went in and spied the land. When he saw the, he saw the, he had the proof. He had the proof, Elder. He saw it with his own eyes. But it took 45 more years. He was 85. He was 85 until the, when the promise was fully, it came to full fruition. I want to say to somebody, don't give up because it may take a long time. Joanne, don't, don't give up because it looks like it's going to take a long time. Me and Pastor C, we engaged in the process. We, matter of fact, we've been engaged in the process since July last year. And boy, I was, boy, I, was, I had to speak in tongues a whole lot, y'all, over these last several months. Ooh, but you know what, Pastor C? I got to hold your hands on this one because I might, I might shout. I can see the light. I can see the light, too. I walked in it. I, I walked around it. I've been visualizing. I ain't talking about no spooky stuff either. I've been, I've been visualizing, dreaming. I see ourselves at the table. And for some, this is your season to buy. For some, this is your season to upgrade. Mm. Ooh, shot dive over. Ooh. Hey. Ooh. I felt that myself. Ooh. Ah. Mm. That you've been moving in that in the in that direction, but you stopped because they said no the first time. Don't take no for an answer. Work on your stuff. For some, you just need to get your credit score up about 50 points. I said 50 points. For some, it's about a hundred points. You gotta do a little bit more work. But I sense a time and a season of renewal, upgrade, restoration for the people of God. Come on, y'all. Let's stand. I know we can do it. I know we can do it. Ooh, glory to God. Mm.